Hello developers, welcome to day 15 of our 15 days object oriented programming series. We are assuming that these 14 days topics help you to get a decent hands on on object oriented programming concepts. As we discussed initially, object oriented programming is a fundamental in the system design. So we use the entire classes, objects, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction and encapsulation together to build systems in Java. So in this video, let us try to understand the basic e-commerce system design. Usually in Java, we divide the entire application into different modules and if you can look at here, so we divide that into different layers. So here, if you can look at, we have a controller layer, which is responsible for user requests and response and service layer, which is responsible for business logic and repository layer, which is responsible for database logic and finally the data goes and sit in the database. Depending upon that, we break our application into different packages like the model which has model classes and controller which has a controller classes, service package which will have service classes and repository have repository classes and UI will have a UI classes. Or if you look at the project, you now the project looks something like this e-commerce where I created com.trainingmark.ecommerce as a base package and under which I created controller layer, model layer, repository layer, service layer, and then some utility classes, and then UI. This is not a complete solution though, but I'm just giving an overall idea like how you can organize this code according to the different layers. And I recommend that you write the code right from scratch, thinking about what could be the functionality. Here I'm just explaining, take some model class like customer, where you can define some properties like ID, name, username, email, password, contact number, and with a no argument constructor, if you can look at this, all these properties are private. So we restrict that accessibility outside this class. So that's the reason we define the setter methods and getter methods, which is called as a Java bean concept. And finally, we override a toasting method. So like whatever the model class that you take in this project, now you have to create the properties like this and setter methods and getters methods along with the toasting. Hey, thanks for watching our content so far. If you're new to Training Mark, we're the fastest growing technology training company and create content to help freshers like you to master the disruptive technologies like full stack development, AML, cloud, DevOps, etc. If you like the content so far, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon not to miss any new content from us. Like and share this video with all your friends. Let's build your career and the community together. Now, similarly, here I've taken a product with ID, name, category, and then price list. And again, we have getters and setters with a toasting method implementation. So if you're looking about the repository layer, so I have my customer repository where I'm just creating a customer list as an array of list. And if you can look at that, these, we are performing certain kind of CRUD operations. If you can look at the customer repository is having an array list, which is initially empty. And we have methods called add customer. So where we pass the customer data, and then here we are adding the customer. And similarly, we are just getting a customer ID. And if you can look at get customer ID, if you pass ID and we are using streams here. So if you don't know what are streams, we are going to discuss them very in detail in our collection framework. And this is the way we write the code to find uh, the customer by ID. And similarly, we have get all customers, which basically returns the array list. And uh, the update customer, now this will pass an updated customer, we'll get the customer and then we update the data in the list. And uh, we have a delete customer. This is the break basic CRUD operation. Similarly, we have a basic CRUD operations for product as well, where we have a list of products and then get products, add product, get product by ID, update product, delete product, etc. Then in the service layer, we have an interface called customer service, where it has the basic CRUD operations like add customer, get customer ID, get all customers, update customer, delete customer, etc. And the service IMPL with the help of your uh, repository layer. Now it has to use the uh, repository layers methods to implement this logic. And similarly, the product service will have all these basic CRUD methods and product service IMPL has to implement that taking the help of a uh, product repository. And similarly, you can create some util classes to store some predefined data of customers, predefined data of products. And then uh, in the UI, you can create all the basic UI uh, classes like you know showing products, and asking the customer to log in, sign up, and you know, all the uh, menus so that you know, customer can navigate and then choose the products to buy, sell, and then make a payment. So accordingly, you can scale this application by implementing all the necessary classes and interfaces. So once you've done this code, send your code to hiring at the 
so that our team will review your code and then we'll give a detailed feedback so that you'll understand what can be improved. So if you like the video, please hit a like and then share this video with all your friends. Let's build a great developer community together. See you in the next videos.